Hey everybody, Scout Crafter here again. One of our viewers, Tom from New Jersey, uh, sent an uh, email to me and he shot me. He said uh, he was having a little problem. He had a bolt that uh, was bent and he was wondering if I could use the dake to straighten it out. And he was having a little difficulty with it. And you know, when I hear dake and it was part of a park of ice, uh, of course, you know, we, uh, we got to keep these parkers in, in uh, service. So he sent it over. Let's check it out. This should be a lot of fun. Now here's the bolt that Tom sent over. You can see here it's bent. He wanted to straighten this out. Now, um, it looks like it possibly could be straightened out, but okay, let me tell you. First of all, whenever we can, we're going to try and I'm going to try and fabricate him a new uh, a new bolt. I mean, why should we straighten this out? Because you know when you bend it back, you always take the chance it could break or whatever. We'll try and straighten it out, but I'm going to also try and make him a new one, which would be fun. And uh, let me show you where this came from. Okay, here's my Parker, and uh, I believe this is the one he's talking about. That little screw right there that holds in the collar that holds in the shaft. Now, one nice thing about Parker vices, I don't know if you realize this. You see this little screw here? This little screw allows you to put tension. You know how usually when you do this, it bang, it slops to the bottom? You could put tension. I leave it a little uh, tight so that I can leave it, you know, I could just move it. I like to leave it in the middle. But isn't that a nice little feature, that little screw in there puts tension as a spring and a ball detent that puts pressure on here so that you can uh, it doesn't have to slop around so that's what we're going to work with today this screw now when i was about 17 years old i picked this up at u.s general it was a, a tool store in long island and <clears throat> this is a a drill stand but i used this so many times growing up because when i went to see the size of something or a bolt i would use the drill stand now for example, this bolt, we want to see what size it is. It won't fit in 15 64ths. It won't fit in, but quarter inch, it fits in. So I knew it was a quarter inch bolt. And this thing lasted me and worked well for many years. But it, it's not super accurate because it's a drill stand. It's really not made for this. Now, later on, years ago, I bought these. Um, they were on sale. And I picked them up. And what it is, it's a thread and uh, a pitch gauge, you know, more or less for testing screws. It's just a quick way that, you know, there's other ways to do it, and I'll show you in a minute, but here it is. If I want to see what this is, I just try it into a couple of here, and I'll show you how that works. Now, this one here is a metric and standard uh, combination. This one here is all metric, the black, and this one here is a uh, all uh, standard. And let me show you how the, the how nicely these work. Now, basically you have this hanging up, but it, it's on a cable and has a loop. So you leave it hanging on your shop. And what I do is I go up here and I say, okay, what uh, this bolt that we're working with, what's it look like? And you hold it up next to it and you say, okay, it looks kind of like this one. And that's a quarter by 20, very common size. So then we uh, turn it into here and, and sure enough, it fits really nice in there. That's a quarter by 20. That's uh, probably one of the most common size bolts there are. But if it didn't fit, you know, you might, if it's the pitch is too fine, the threads are too fine, you might try this one a quarter by 28, or you might try one of the metric ones till you eventually find what size it is. But we know this is a quarter by 20. Let me show you another way of finding out. Okay, now to normally in a machinist shop, in order to check out if they uh, got a bolt in, they weren't sure what size it was. The first thing they would do is put either a a mic on it or they would put a, you know a caliper to find out the uh, size of the bolt, the approximate size. And by checking it this way, you could see here this one it's uh, 245 thousandths, which is very 250 would be a quarter inch, so it's close enough to quarter inch. You know about the size it is. Uh, then. You would take a screw pitch gauge. Now, these are two beautiful Starrett examples, um, but you can use the, uh, the the Chinese knockoffs, you know, when you, especially if you're not doing this for a living. But um, these, if you could find these at a flea market, uh, they're always a, a nice find or whatnot. And uh, you can see here it says, over here it says 13 to 32 threads per inch. And over here it says 3.5 to 12. So, uh, obviously, these are the real big ones. Look at this one. Look at the threads on here, huh? So uh, we know this one here, it's, it's going to be less, it's going to be uh, less than, uh, it's going to be less than 32, and it's going to be between 13 and 32, so we'll go on this side, and I'm pulling out 20 to show you what it should look like, and let me show you how this works. Now when you're working with something like this, you want to uh, have a light background, and 
preferably a pair of glasses if you get to my age. Now, you can see here, this one here is 22. That's teeth per inch, 22. And this one here is 20. That's And TPI is uh, the abbreviation for teeth per inch. Now, uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this uh, 22 and we're going to put it up to the threads. And you're going to see that it doesn't line up correctly. See, it just, it's not seating well. So you say, okay, let's go to this one here. This is 20, which we know it is. And sure enough, look how that seats on these. See how that fits on here? And I'll zoom in to show you. Okay, this is what it should look like. You see that, how it, uh, it fits on there, the threads? That's how you know everyone fits in there perfect. And that's how you determine what the thread pitch is. Now, years ago in shop class, what they used to do was, um, I never took a shop class. I was never lucky enough, but uh, I know that friends of mine, and I know Mr. Pete used to talk about it on his channel. Uh, what they used to do is they took a piece of steel, and they would drill holes and uh, make basically an, a thread and nut checker. And you see these a lot in Home Depot and whatnot. And what you do is you would cut the head off this. We know this is a quarter by 20. You would drill a hole, glue that in there, and then you would take the nut and put it next to it. And or you would drill a hole and tap it quarter by 20 if it was in the metal or whatnot. And that was your own. You did that for all different sizes and you had that in your shop and you can always check it. Now, we know this is a quarter by 20. And again, to check it, you can always take a nut and just spin it on here and you can see and there's no wobble or anything. That's a quarter by 20. And uh, and then you can use this or any other type of threading to check your threads. But we have uh, two examples here of something we're going to use. Now, Tom told me that the uh, it's obvious he couldn't find one of these because I, this is the closest one, but it wouldn't fit because it's too wide. It won't fit into the uh, chamber. But it doesn't have to be as thick as this because, obviously, uh, you're only going to see the top. And then this one here, if we were going to make one, fabricate one, you could see it's the same thing. It wouldn't fit in, but we can uh, turn this down and we could cut a slot in here. So let's show two different ways of making this now, uh, you didn't have a lathe but you have a grinder or a belt sander and you have a drill we'll chalk up the uh the nut into a it's just a cordless drill and we'll hold it against the grinding wheel and uh, that'll make quick work of getting it round okay you guessed it we're over at the lathe again now with this uh, the one that we were using the bolt head to try and fabricate this um it's still just a little bit proud as far as uh wide it's not the exact size yet but we're going to trim that down because we're going to go into the lathe but you notice here it's got that nice convex over here so um we're going to put that in here because even though it won't be as as wide as thick as this head for the appearance when you look at that collar you'll see it's nice and uh and curved and uh, convex so that's what we're going to do now we're going to put that in there make it convex and then we'll cut the slot in Okay, now take a look at this. See how nice that looks right there? Oh, sorry, out of camera. Out of, see how nice that looks right there? So then we're uh, now we're just gonna have to cut a slot in there, and uh, that will be a look a good looking bolt. Now we have to draw, put a slot in the top of this head, and uh, what we're gonna do is we took a piece of scrap wood, we drilled a hole in just a little bit smaller than a quarter of an inch and then we just cut the or you can split it put it in half and that'll be our jig to hold the threads without messing them up see that'll give a nice soft way of holding the threads in now, the bike. as easy as this step looks to just uh, cut a slot in the top of this bolt head it's a little bit harder than you might think so the first thing we want to do is take a nice triangular file okay a nice triangular file and what we're going to do is we're going to cut a a slot and you see how i'm using my finger you can't be worried about the, your fingerprints at this point but we're going to uh drag it across now remember these files are meant to cut these particular ones especially in the edge are meant to cut both ways but we're going to drag it across until we get uh, a slight line across the center here and then we're going to file and just get a starting point so our saw could rest in so it's right in the middle Okay, see how that slot is dead set in the center? Now what we have to do is put a hacksaw in and cut the slot. Okay, we have the slot cut in nice and uh, straight. 
Now, if we want it a little bit wider, or if you want it a little wider, it was a little wider on the Parker vices, so I'm gonna take a Swiss pattern file, as you can see, it's a flat file, and I'm going to slip it in here, and just, I want this the same width as the Swiss pattern file, so I'll just rock it back and forth, and you can see it cuts through nicely, and we'll get this slot opened up to the same width as the, uh, as this file, which will be just about the same size as the one that came off the Parker. And also it, it makes it a little bit easier for a screwdriver to fit in. This isn't a high torque screw. So you can see that does a nice job. Okay, now we're actually gonna do the job that Tom asked us to do. We're gonna uh, heat it up and we're gonna try and bend this back and see what happens. Uh, now we, all the pressure is off because we have two of them made, but we would like to get the exact size of this because I might have to cut the other ones down, so. Let's see if we can straighten this out for time. Well, uh, success, we were able to straighten it out, but I did feel a little bit of, uh, of, you know, I guess you could call it cracking. It just didn't feel right, you know, when you get to the end. And whenever you overstress a bolt like this was bent and then bent back, it's never a good idea to reuse it because for the simple reason that when you screw this in, if that should break, now you got a, a second problem. There's no reason to have that problem. In fact, a lot of uh, old vehicles, if the um, like head bolts and things like that, that are constantly heated and cooled and heated and cooled, a lot of times they'll throw those bolts out and use brand new ones, even if they look fine because the uh, it's been stressed and overstressed. So this one is no good to use. Tom, do not use this bolt. Um, for the other two, the only difference is now it's about a quarter of an inch longer. We have to take a quarter of an inch off each bolt. And the reason we do that is because we wouldn't want this bottoming out before uh, before it tightens up. You can see you measure it from the shoulder, which is here, to the tip. And you can see from the shoulder when they line up, the tips are a little long. So we'll take a quarter of an inch off each of these, and I'll show you how we do that. Now, there's another reason that this jig is so ingenious to use, because... Um, now we have the bolt in there, and if you tried to put this into a vise, it'd be very difficult because of the head, you know, to try and hold it. This way, we could put this in the vise, and we could screw this while it's in the vise to get the exact diameter, what we want to cut off. Now, you see how when I put the shoulder of the bolt here, you see how much is sticking out there? It's only about, a, about an eighth of an inch, a little bit over. So we will screw this out so that it's an eighth of an inch plus the width of the saw blade. Now when positioned in the vise, you see how nice this is. Now I can easily put a screwdriver here and adjust what the depth or whatever length I want to protrude from that jig. And then I could take my hacksaw and I could either use this as a guide to run it straight down, or I could just pick one of the threads and cut it off. Really works well. Now after we cut it, we're gonna file it and then hit it with the wire brush. Okay, here we are. They are exactly cut to length. And uh, it's always a good idea to just check them against the nut. And this is the way you want your tips to look. You know, you want them to be uh, slightly tapered uh, so that they'll start easy into the vise or whatever you're going to use them for. And there they are, all three cut to the exact length. And here they are is how you will see them in the Parker vise. Now the center one obviously is the one that, um, that Tom sent in, but uh, the other two uh, do look good, and that's the ones I would use. Do not use the center one, Tom. I wouldn't trust it, not after it's been stressed. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, something different. Thanks very much, and uh, have a nice day. Bye-bye.